Hi guys, welcome back to A Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another natural resource struggle. Today I'm going to talk about the hoteling rule. The hoteling rule is mainly about oil, but can be used to talk about any finite non-renewable resource. And as usual, timestamps are below if you'd like to jump around. But let me give you just the big picture. So the big picture is we've got a non-renewable resource, and we've got a finite amount of it in stock. What hoteling basically said, what the hoteling rule basically is, is saying that whatever sort of market you're in, the scarcity rent is going to increase at the interest rate. And one thing that comes out of that rule is that demand and supply are both zero simultaneously exactly when we run out of this finite resource in year T. And so I'm going to go through the math here in a second, but if you're not so math intensive, the hoteling rule, maybe you just need to know what scarcity rent is. Okay, well, scarcity rent, if you're in perfect competition, it's just that the price is increasing at the interest rate if you don't have any marginal cost. If you have marginal cost though, the scarcity rent is just the price minus the marginal cost. In monopoly setting, instead of price, we're thinking about marginal revenue. So with zero marginal cost, the marginal revenue is increasing at the interest rate. If you have some marginal costs, then of course scarcity rent is just marginal revenue minus marginal cost, and that's what's gonna increase at the interest rate. Now, if you're in a course which is a little more math intensive, you might be asked to find the trajectory of prices, the trajectory of quantities or amount that you pull out of the ground, as well as find sort of an equation for the last year in which this resource exists. And so to do that, we're going to set up a maximization problem. We're going to have Bill. He's going to maximize this sort of private competition profit maximization problem where he's maximizing revenue because we're going to say costs are zero. And we have this demand function where price is equal to A minus B times QT. We know from what we just talked about that prices are gonna go up at the interest rate because we're in a perfect competition setting. So we know that PT plus one is one plus the real interest rate or R times PT. We know that at the end of the period in year T, demand is zero, quantity is zero, and so the price must be equal to A. And so using just these two facts as well as sort of our demand curve, we're gonna be able to trace out the last period T and also our prices and quantities in each period. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to find PT or the trajectory of prices. And all we're going to do for that is we're just going to say, okay, well, here's a demand function. We know that tomorrow's price is today's price times one plus R because we know that prices are going up at the interest rate. So if we go all the way back to P0, if we keep filling this in, and again, if this is not enough, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to add a little bit of explanation here. But what you get from this is if you go all the way back to P0, you're gonna get that PT is just P0 times one plus R to the T, because whatever you started with, it's just been increasing at the interest rate for T years, and so that's how you get PT. We also know that in the last period, P cap T, that our price is exactly equal to A, and so A must be equal to P0 times one plus R to the cap T. And I'm just gonna resolve that for P0, and then I'm gonna plug that back into PT. And so this is gonna be my equation for PT right here where it's just gonna be A over one plus R to the cap T minus T, where again, now it's just based on how close we are to the last period. Okay, so now I've got my PT, and I'm gonna just solve that for QT. So I'm gonna work through the algebra, and I'm gonna get this big messy equation right here, where QT is A over B times this messy thing right here. Okay, so now I've got QT. One thing I also know is I know that in my constraint, that for our maximization problem, we had that the sum of the extraction has got to be equal to the amount that there was in the ground. Okay, so I'm just going to use that. I'm just going to use this constraint right here. I know what QT is. QT is this box in green right here. So I'm going to plug that in, and I'm going to work through some math. And as I work through the math, I get to this point right here where I've got to figure out what I'm going to do. Well, I know that this guy right here, if I think about 1 plus R to the cap T minus T as sort of an X, I know that x minus 1 over x is just 1 minus 1 over x. Just some algebra, and so I'm going to break up this sum into the sum from t equals 0 to cap t of 1 minus t equals 0 to t of this guy right here. And now this right here, this is just a finite geometric series, which the sum of that is going to be this guy in blue right here. If you don't recognize that, I've got a separate video that's going to pop up in the top right corner right about now that's going to show you how I get that sum. But if you remember that from another class or somewhere else, that's totally fine too. And the sum from zero to cap T of one is just cap T. And so now I've got this right here and this equation I can plug in and I can do some sort of mathematical solving in order to get what big T is exactly equal to. If I had numbers for B and A and R and R zero, that would tell me exactly what T is. And then I would be set to jet. And so again, just the basic idea of the hoteling rule again, that scarcity rent is going to go up at the interest rate. 
And so whatever your sort of cost structure, whatever your market structure is, you can use to determine what your scarcity rent is. You can do a maximization problem with some math to figure out PTs and the QTs and how big cap T is. You can plug that into something like Excel Solver, and then I'll tell you the answer. But hopefully this sort of makes the hoteling rule make a little more sense, sort of you've seen it once. If there's something in particular you'd like to see or a question you still have, please post that in the comment section below. But again, if these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.